don't know if I've mentioned this before, but Tammy and I love the mountains. And that might lead you to assume that we also love camping. And you would be right. As soon as the snow melted on our first summer living in Aurora, Tammy and I were in the woods and we found a spot that wasn't quite big enough for our gigundus tent. Look at that googly peat ginormous tent. That's ridiculous. Over the years we've found better camping spots and learned more and more tips and tricks to make our experience better, but this year something major happened. You see, a while back we went to an outdoor expo. Yeah, big mistake. And we saw a new thing. It's called the jumping jack. It's a trailer that can haul the toys and it has a huge tent inside. And it's hugely expensive. I mean, not expensive like a full-on RV, but it's a big step up from our Walmart tent. And then, after several years of trying and failing to find good riding buddies, I decided I needed to sell my dirt bike. I know, it's so sad. <laughs> it was just way too dangerous for me to be riding alone way up in the mountains a long way from camp and I knew that I would never quit doing it as long as every time I opened the shed I heard that siren call. Let's go riding! So with the money from the bike and selling our existing trailer we were able to afford a JJ. We've made several trips this year and we've had to learn a whole new set of tips and tricks to make the JJ work from finding camping spots that are big enough and level enough and figuring out how to minimize the rocking and rolling every time one of us turns over in our sleep. Here's a hint, jack stands. And don't even get me started on the ramp problem. Go, it's bowing bad. Holy crap. Yeah, $800 for giant aluminum loading ramps sounds stupid, but it is required. Good morning. Hi. <laughs> I'm camping in the woods with the hamster. We're out here in the JJ. Jumping Jack trailer, and it's so awesome. It can haul the bear, that's the bear. It can haul the bear, and then when we get here, it opens all up and there's a tent inside. And because we got the 12 foot trailer with the eight foot tent, we did that on purpose, because then we have plenty of room in the tent, and we have a porch, and we have these like kind of tables on the side where we can put the water, and the stove, and the food, and the coolers, and all the things. It's so awesome. This is the rest of the campsite, but sadly, we are under stage two fire restrictions, so I can't even run a chainsaw, much less have a campfire. We wouldn't even consider tent camping with fire restrictions because without a fire, you just end up sitting cross-legged on your air mattress all day with nothing to do. But in the JJ... So here's a tour. Oh, wait a second, it's not clean yet. We have to clean up before we do the tour. Here's my bed on this side. I'll make my bed. Here, I made my bed. And then we have the table and the chairs. And the Tammy. And Tammy, and that's Tammy's side. Anyway, so we can play games in here, hang out at night, or whatever. Look at all the headroom. And we have our buddy heaters. Little buddy and big buddy. Yay for buddy. Yeah. And so what I found out was if you crack a window on one side and you leave the bottom of the door unzipped a little bit, it pulls the air through and you don't have to worry about running out of oxygen or carbon monoxide. Plus, both of these actually have carbon monoxide detectors in them and they'll shut themselves off if they get too bad. So, so that's cool. We can run it and if we fall asleep, it's not, you know, we don't have to be scared of dying. So that's good. Hi, Lee. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. That's the healthy thing about this that I don't like. Our beds are on two different sides. Yes, so no snuggling in the morning. I don't have my human pillow. Mm, or heater. Or heater. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See this little guy with absolutely no fear of me? He's called a camp robber. And now you know why. He's picking up all the little scraps of our leftover eggs from where I cleaned the pan out over there. The bad thing is, we don't get everything buttoned up real good while we're gone. He and all his buddies will come over here and clean us out. What were you saying? What's that? <laughs> Time to go. Another new thing this year, I finished my onboard air project in my truck Buster. That's so awesome! I got a new helmet. He did. It's too loose. No, it's not. It's pretty. It is pretty. 
On this day, we did the Swan River Montezuma Loop, starting off with North Fork Swan and stopping off at the Wise Mountain Cabin, which was Ocupado. If you come to the mountains or anywhere where you're gonna encounter wildlife, it's very important that you know the rule of thumb. And that is if you hold your thumb out at arm's length and you are not able to cover the wildlife that you are approaching, you are too close. It's really clever if you think about it because your thumb can cover a chipmunk at about five feet, but a rutting moose is about a hundred yards away. However, Okay, for the record, we did not approach her. She approached us. Yep. Hey now, you stay back. I'm, I'm at the truck, what do you want me to do? <laughs> I'm not bothering you. You don't bother me. You just got no fear, huh? Um, I know the rule about not approaching wildlife, but, um, <laughs> we have a problem. <laughs> Move along. Okay. That's a first. Onward and upward towards St. John. This is my favorite place to be. I hear a pika over there, but I don't see him. We're at a probably 11, 5, 11,500, something like that. Oh, I love it here. As much as I feel like this is home to me, this makes me so mad. This makes me feel like somebody's driving across my yard. Don't do that. This is the road. Everyone can see that this is the road. If it's too rocky, you shouldn't be here. If you're driving on the grass, you're screwing it up for everybody. It makes me so mad. Ugh. Mm. Anyway. Down Saints John, and yes, it is Saints, plural. A little side trip to the Hunky Dory Mine. Then through Montezuma and up Deer Creek. Oh, it's nice to take the helmet off. Lunchtime. Not a bad place for lunch. What you doing, dear? Oh, she tinkled in the woods. Tammy was looking for a pee spot and she found a picture spot. And finally, back up and over the Continental Divide down Middle Fork Swan to camp. She does to the best. <laughs> Well, dear, how was our day? Bouncy. Yes, very bouncy. But now we're in our springy chairs that would normally be springy around a campfire, but we can't have a campfire because of fire restrictions because there hasn't been enough rain. Awesome to them. Yes, please. Or I'm going to eat the whole bag. <laughs> oh, there's another one. Look who's back. Somebody heard the Cheetos bag. Did you hear my Cheetos bag? Camp robbers. Good morning. Hello. I need a shower. Me too. <laughs> We're stinky. <laughs> so, yep, last morning, things kind of winding down. Breakfast champions. Cold Pop-Tarts. And don't forget church. Every time we go camping, I can never get Tammy to just relax and chill on Sunday morning. As soon as breakfast is put away, she is breaking camp. Probably has something to do with taking her first shower in two days, but uh. And while the JJ is awesome, it does take a lot longer than the 10 seconds you see at the Outdoor Expo to pack it up. Who did it? JJ put up a fight. Yeah, he did. He did not want to go home. Good job, though. Bad JJ. High five. We are all loaded up, ready to go home. Shower time! <laughs> Shower time, maybe in three or four hours. Pizza time! Pizza time! Bye mountains, see you later.